I did a um, long version of a video exposing Crashgate yesterday. Um, this is a short version, so I hope that when you see this one, uh, you'll be inspired to watch the long, long version. Um, I'm relying on the Mirror newspaper as the source for this information. So um, it might not be an authentic source. We all need to be wary of every single media source because as has been proven, the media lie. Okay, But... Assuming that the media has presented an authentic account of what Bernie Eccleston said about Crashgate and his opinions, um, I'm going to expose it, the ridiculous nature of it, and hopefully it will inspire you to watch the longer version and inspire you to realise what is going on about Abu Dhabi. So here goes. Bernie Eccleston feels the 2008 F1 total race should have ended differently. Okay. Bernie Eccleston should have stripped Lewis Hamilton of the F1 title as rival cheated. So Eccleston, as the man who owns the um, marketing rights for the sport, thinks he has the power to strip a competitor of the title. Is he, is he the governing body? Does he set the rules? Is he an official in the sport? No. No, Bernie. Know your place. You shouldn't strip anybody of a title okay that's not who you are but now you're giving your opinion as a 90 odd year old senile old twat all right but anyway xf1 supremo supremo eccleston feels felipe massa was the rightful winner of the 2008 race and claims michael schumacher is still the sole record world champion over hamilton that is a personal bias. That's his personal opinion based on his personal desires. This article was written by Daniel Moxon, the senior F1 writer for The Mirror. F1 journalists are shit. They are parroting a narrative. None of them are exposing the truth. None of them are going into depth and exposing the corruption in the sport. They've all got a cushy number. Just, just parroting the narrative. They get to go to the old Grand Prix. They get paid for just giving out the information that they're paid to give out by the rich people that are involved in the sport. Anyway, Bernie Eccleston regrets not stripping Lewis Hamilton of the 2008 Formula 1 title and handing it to cheated Felipe Massa. How was Felipe Massa cheated? Okay, who cheated Felipe Massa? Right? Like, number one, Eccleston, you can't strip anybody of anything. You're not the governing body. You owned the commercial rights. You sold them to Liberty Media. Okay? So, 92-year-old was in charge of the sport at the time Hamilton famously won his maiden title on the last lap of the Brazilian Grand Prix. For a few seconds, Massa believed he was champion, but Timo Glock was struggling with his tyres and the Brits passed in the final few corners to secure enough points to take glory. Many of us remember that. Um, but Eccleston feels another incident earlier in the season should have been dealt with differently. He referred to the Singapore Grand Prix, the site of Crashgate scandal, um, which later engulfed F1. Nelson Piquet Jr. said he had been told by his Renault team to crash on purpose to give teammate Fernando Alonso an advantage. This came out in 2009. Here we go. But Eccleston admitted that he and then FIA chief Max Mosley found out about earlier and should have acted. So what Eccleston is admitting to is knowing that a competitor and a, well, a team cheated in that Grand Prix, enabling them to win that Grand Prix. He found out about it and he did nothing. That is called corruption. That is called covering up a crime. He has admitted to that. That makes him a criminal. He thinks he can't be done for this now, but that is actually the truth of the matter. Bernie Eccleston is a criminal. He was complicit with a crime by 
serving to cover it up. The Renault team cheated. The Singapore Grand Prix was the first night Grand Prix ever staged. It was a big event and attracted a huge audience. The event was um, sponsored. One of the, the sponsors of that event was ING, a Dutch investment banking company. The Renault team was sponsored by ING, that same Dutch investment banking company. That car won the race. I wonder what the motive was. Global. Global exposure for this ailing company that would have given them a boost. Check out their, their share price, what it was doing in 2008. Everything revolves around money. Everything revolves around money. Eccleston told F1 Insider, back then, there was a rule that a world championship classification after the FIA award ceremony at the end of the year was untouchable. So Hamilton was presented with the world championship and everything was fine. A rule that a world championship classification after the ceremony was untouchable. They don't have that rule in cycling where they stripped Lance Armstrong of his Tour de France titles when he was found guilty of cheating, of being a drugs cheat. They don't have that rule in the Olympics or athletics in any, any form of uh, event that's in the Olympics where cheats are stripped of their titles if they are later found to have cheated. That is a sport-wide thing. If you have cheated, you lose your titles. But Formula One, they think that they, they can put in place rules that mean that you don't do that. What kind of a rule is that and why would you do so? But according to the statutes, we should have cancelled the race in Singapore under these conditions. That means it would never have happened for the World Championship standings. Then Felipe Massa would have become World Champion and not Lewis Hamilton. Right. In any event where you uh, find out that somebody is cheating, do you cancel that event? No, you don't. You simply disqualify the cheat and then everybody else's place gets amended. So for the 2008 Singapore Grand Prix where Crashgate took place, you disqualify the cheats. You disqualify Renault, the team that crashed their car on purpose to enable their other car to win. That is cheating. You disqualify that car so it doesn't benefit from cheating. So Alonso loses that victory. The car that came second, which was Nico Rosberg in a Williams, gets promoted to first. Hamilton finished third. He gets promoted to second. Felipe Massa finished 13th. He finished 13th because his Ferrari pit crew did not detach the refueling rig in time because they had a malfunction with their automated release system. And Massa drove out of the pits with that still attached, ripping it cl uh, clear off the uh, refueling rig. He ended up at the end of the pit lane with it still attached and lost a lot of time in that race. It clearly messed with his head because he made a lot of other mistakes in that race as well and ended up finished 13th. That was their mistake. Unlucky. You don't cancel the event. But that's what Eccleston is suggesting. That is done out of pure hatred. Pure hatred for a, a single competitor. So, it continues. Hamilton finished third. While Massa was unable to, unable to score point, points as he finished 13th. Uh, Eccleston added, I still feel sorry for Massa today. He won the final at his home race in Sao Paulo and did everything right. At He won the final. Okay, There is no final in Formula 1. It is a league season. In Premier League football, there is no final. You play your, se your season's long fixtures, you accumulate points at each match. Each match you can get zero, one or three points. You accumulate them 
to the total, whoever ends up with the most points at the end of the season is the champion. The same thing happens in Formula 1. At each race, you accumulate points. You add them points together. At the end of the season, you count them up. You see who's got the most. That isn't a final. Eccleston says, I still feel sorry for Massa today. He won the final at his home race. There is no final. He and did everything right. He was cheated out of the title he deserved. Who cheated him? Who cheated him? Renault cheated to win a race, so you disqualify Renault. But everything else that happened in that race, everybody was subjected to those same conditions, those same set of circumstances, and had to deal with them, and still raced on. And still, the race positions were what they were. So, once again, Massa deserved the title where Hamilton had all the luck. Where have we heard that before? With Strapon. Strapon fully deserved it. Here's the key. Today, I would have arranged things differently. Bernie Eccleston supposedly says, Today, I would have arranged things differently. Bernie Eccleston, as the man who held the marketing rights to Formula One, says, I would have arranged things differently. So the people that own the marketing rights to Formula One have the ability to arrange the results of the sport. Is that what you're telling us, Bernie? Is that what you're telling us? Because we know that that's what's happened in Abu Dhabi. We know that the people that own the marketing rights to the sport have arranged things differently. They got the FIA to do what they needed to do to get the result that they wanted. To get the ending that they wanted to contrive to excite the global audience to create the spectacle. Eccleston says, Michael Schumacher is still the sole record world champion for me. Even if the statistics say otherwise. That's your opinion, Eccleston. That's based on your biases, your own personal beliefs. Please watch the longer one. There's a lot more detail with a lot greater examples in there. This is just a short one because I know a lot of people can't cope with watching a long video. Lots more to come on the channel. Thanks for watching.